people over there, Rogue Shock here. Just gonna do a quick overview of some of my tanks. Um, gonna quick on, hit on a few points about all of them. Uh, all two viewers that are gonna see this uh, can disagree if they want. <laughs> um, all right, first we've got the uh, Panzer II box. It's a really quick tank. It's, uh, it's best, obviously, for scouting because it's the magic you're gonna get with it is scouting. So I mean, a lot of people might play this tank first and be able to seem to. Uh, Complain? Why am I always seeing so many tears above me? Why am I always seeing this tank? But that's because you're playing scout tank, and it's mainly for that. Not until later down the uh, the tech tree do you get into something worthwhile, which would be the uh, the Indian Indian Panzer, the Leopard type, and the Leopard one, which are, from what I've heard, amazing tanks, and they look good. But uh, anyway, Panzer two Lux, quick, speedy tank. It's not very great, uh, not very good at turning or adjusting its. Um, Changing course very well, so you gotta want to keep moving, scout, and get to a nice little bush, scout it out, and if you can, late game, the artist still up, pick up, rush to get rid of the art, because that can be, can change the game pretty quickly if they're still up at the end, you know, close battle. Next up, we've got the VK 3601H. It's from what I've read, and for 8.8, it's going to become a heavy tank, and it plays just like it. The armor on the front is amazing. You're going to want to angle this armor. I mean, 100 millimeters is the same thickness that the Tiger one gets. So, I mean, that's pretty awesome. But this uh, beautiful viewport and the machine gun port, they can penetrate pretty regularly through it. Um, I see a lot of people playing this tank with the uh, L70 gun. Do not waste your time. If you have this, most likely you've researched these. And if you haven't, well, it's. For anyone, Konish is the uh, is a better gun choice for this. Outside of using the uh, the short 88, so and from from what I've read and what I've experienced, the, the Konish is a little bit more reliable when you get into higher tiers for constantly penetrating. Whereas the uh, 88 sometimes will just ding and bounce off. But the alpha damage is a lot more tempting for a lot of people, so that's why they use it. I use it myself. But like I said, the Konish, while I had that, that was amazing. And so many people use this. This is the same gun that the Stu 3 and the Jagdpanzer use for a little while. And it's a good gun, but for this tank, there's so many. There's no, two other better alternatives. Obviously, if you haven't got this one, you're tempted, like, oh, well, this one's later in the tree. I should use that one. Just look at the tiers 6, 7. Clearly, they don't just put 7 in the tiers. They're just going to use that one instead. But anyway, this is a speedy little tank. It's got really good armor. Um, it's definitely a fun tank to use. It's probably one of the, my better tanks that I've got uh, that I use. Definitely a thumbs up for that one. Tiger, Tiger was the main tank that I wanted before I even got the game. Before I even got the game, it's free, but for, first one that I wanted to you know, start playing. But once I got it, it's a really good tank. So many people just sit there and think that this hundred millimeters is great. You just face. You're gonna want to angle it. It does. It's every. Pretty much everything can penetrate it pretty reliably, and the ammo rack is pretty easily destroyed, or your loader is taken out, along with it being set on fire quite regularly. So it's kind of a pain in the butt to use, to grind with, especially since you're probably only going to have the short, well you should only have the short uh, 88, which, you know, that's the one you're going to want to use. A lot of people use the L70, the same one I don't recommend on the 36, still don't recommend it, still prefer the 88. I'd rather, I don't know, I just prefer to use that. Do not use the dirt. That's just pointless. The tier 7 games up to tier 9. Why? I mean, it still does have a damage roll every once in a while. It might, it's not going to do the 350. It might get 100 or 90. But for the long reload, it's not worth it just to use that over the other two. But like I said, this L, the long 88 grind is a pain in the butt. And the penetration isn't the greatest for tier 7, but it's still... You know, n nor is the damage, but it's pretty. It's great for sniping, and the accuracy hit homes on that. So it's great for sniping. You don't want to be. Your team's gonna want you to be at the forefront, especially if you're top tier. But that's just not how it's played. It's too easy to destroy so much crap in this tank. Always recommend a fire extinguisher for any of the two tigers. Tiger, this tiger one, and the tiger, uh, the tiger P. Get a fire extinguisher. I can't tell you how many times I've seen teammates set ablaze, you're in a tiger, it's basically you're driving around with a uh, flamethrower on the yonder bag, pretty easy to set on fire, and people that know how to set it on fire will set it on fire, so for that, 
just get it. Don't ask. Tiger 2, it was my first tier 8, and I only have two tier 8s, so that's not really the accomplishment to say it's my first. But anyway, this tank is a lot of fun, and especially coming from the Tiger, you know, with, this is 100 millimeters, like I said, armor, not the greatest, everything will pen through it, unless you angle the armor correctly. And this one has 150 for the whole armor, and it's angled pretty well on its own, so a lot of the shots will ding, and the first time using it, you're going to be like, wow, you know, I'm in a high tier tank and things are bouncing off, this is pretty nice, so heavy, you know, how heavy tanks should feel. The, um, as far as the guns go, I only have grinded out the, uh, the short 105, and it's... Uh, for some people, a lot of people don't like this gun for some reason, I'm not sure why. Obviously, if you have the long 105, that's the one you're going to want to use for 25 penetration, so it makes sense. But um, I, don't, I have no problems using this gun. It performs well. Enemy Tiger 2s, you're going to run into them. They play like they aim for every time. They start turning. You know, take, them, take advantage of them. Blast right through here through the side of the turret. Obviously, the size of the and the event tank, and then obviously, you know, take advantage of it. This was not set on fire too often, as much, not nearly as much as the Tiger. The ammo rack, it's hit or miss about the same amount, you know, not about the same amount, a little bit less as common to get destroyed as it is on the Tiger one. But I'll definitely like using this tank. It's got heavy armor, it moves decent, you know, it says only 28, but, you know, for what it is, it, it feels pretty quick. And, I mean, the gun is pretty reliable, it always always give you something as far as damage from it. It's Duke 3, probably by far one of my favorite uh, tanks that I use, which is kind of funny, like I said, because I don't recommend this L70 on the 3601H, but on this, it's amazing. It just fires so quickly. It's just an amazing gun. This tank thrives by not being seen, so you do not want to be seen, especially with 80 volt, which for tier 5 isn't awful, but you know, it, there's, it's a tank destroyer, so knows how to effectively deal with it, get to the side, get to the rear, track them, flank them, game over for that TD. But for that, you know, stay hidden, you know, camo net, obviously, gun rammer, love it, because, it, I mean, it already fires quick enough, but that just, pff, so much faster. And I have, um, <coughs> binocular, telescope, as well, just because, of, you know, the extra range, a lot more effective. It's, a, it's really fun to use. It's super quick. Turns really easily and quickly as well. And it's got a nice... The gun range when hooker, you know, when in uh, sniper mode is, is amazing. So it's got a nice range of view, uh, range of view around, if you will. Definitely love using this tank. Highly recommend it. T44 <coughs> was my second tier 8. I also have not fully upgraded this one yet. I still need to get the last gun and both engines along with the radio before I get to the C54, which was my, my new goal. Um, definitely, after using the T43, which a lot of people seem to notoriously don't like, I had no problems with it. I actually had like, a pretty good uh, win-loss in using that tank. I mean, it had the eight, the uh, the 88 millimeter, I believe it was. Yep. The 144, 180 uh, gun. It's got a decent fire rate on the T43, and it's, you know, as long as you play it correctly, flanker, not be seen, keep moving. Then you know it will perform well. Even you know, I guess a lot of people like to be at the forefront. Get the uh, the main engagement first. That's just not the way you play it. Turn this down. Uh, ambient noise with this garage. Um, like I said, T44 is a lot of fun. Ammo rack. I hadn't really experienced too much of the ammo rack going up, which until I bought the wet ammo rack, which is kind of. <laughs> perfect timing because when I equip it then the ammo rack starts exploding which is kind of annoying but as far as you know whatever this little spot right here pretty reliably hit right here and ammo rack's going up and I see so many times after games shots right on mine right there or on this side trying to get to that ammo rack always see shots right along there not only because this armor is pretty well sloped I mean, it's 90 uh, millimeters thick at the front. You know, obviously on this one, you want to try to aim for the sides or the rear. The back of the turret, I believe, is another ammo rack. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, definitely love this tank. It's really quick, even with my engine not being upgraded, like I said. That's purely why I use this um, Lund Lethal Way, which gives the only 5%. And, you know, whatever. It, it, that's always a negative 5,000 credits. 
every game I get, I know I'm going to lose 5,000 of that, you know, because that's how much it costs to use this. But it's whatever, you know. Next up we have the KV-1, which definitely has overpowered armor, I feel like, for its tier, which you might not think looking at the stat 75, but so much. Steel Ball is pretty easy to get in this if you know, if you know how to use it correctly. Angle it. Keep the front. Don't show your back. Don't show your side. Try to keep it moving. Um, a lot of people tend to use. <coughs> excuse me. A lot of people tend to use the derp, which is really cool for this gun or for this tank. It's a pretty reliable uh, gun. It, you know, it got that apple damage, but the long reload for me, I didn't. I didn't prefer it. And this one's pretty. This one fires pretty quickly. And 120 pound, 160 damage. It's gonna melt away pretty much everything it runs into. Obviously higher tier games, it's still pretty much a pain in the butt to deal with, you know, if they know where you're at and they're putting constant rounds on your position. Next up, KV-1S, which is amazingly fun to use. Decent, you know, it's got the same, basically the same armor, I believe a little bit less than the KV-1. Yep, a little bit less than the KV-1. But it's a heavy tank, just like the KV-1. But it's extremely quick, turns quick, and, but the turret moves slow, obviously, especially with this, uh, this upgraded gun. And this is the, um, it, obviously there's different variants of it at the higher tier, but this appears to be the same. <coughs> Minus the penetration roll, it seems to be about the same damage roll that you're going to get through the IS, the IS-3, and the IS-7. Minus, like I said, the pen or a little bit more alpha damage. But, um, when using this one, the grind can be a pain in the butt, especially since a lot of the other guns aren't. I believe I use the derp for the most part, just because it always gave you a roll. And I mean, you're not really always at the at the front. You should be at the front of the engagement with this tank, but you can snipe with this derp. It doesn't have the greatest accuracy as you can see with .57, but take advantage of it. Pretty good rate, of, you know. You can uh, put the rounds down their range. Once you get this one, <coughs> really long reload. The accuracy isn't the greatest, but for the most part, as long as you're not shooting across the map, it's always going to hit where it's at. The most annoying thing when using this gun, though, is destroying the tracks on a target, doing no damage. That's, especially with the reload, that's kind of a tissue group target of opportunity. You see, you've got a quick chance for a shot, blow the tracks off. It can help the team, but if it doesn't, then it's kind of like a waste of a round, especially since the rounds for this, I believe, cost a thousand. Next up is a premium tank, SU-122-44, awesome tank, same gun as the uh, the KV-1S, um, but it fires in half the time, basically 7 seconds for the reload. The, pen the armor on this is pretty well, is pretty decent at the front, obviously for a tank destroyer, it's angled well, building a lot of shots, especially for KV-1S's or other uh, high tier Soviets, which is pretty nice, I mean camo net, Gun rammer, obviously, it's already got a quick reload. Make it faster. Vents will be the next thing I get. Either the vents or binoculars. Love this tank. It's so much fun. It's just a troll city with this tank. And poor Sherman. A lot of fun. Quick, speedy tank. Decent gun with a really good fire rate. Although this one is a little bit more. I prefer the uh, the derp just because it's this gun. I feel like sometimes it doesn't penetrate when it should things when it shouldn't. And the accuracy, you know, 0.43 compared to 0.55, I mean, the fire rate's there, but it's, it's I just sometimes just prefer this gun over it, the, the 105 over the 76. Next up, the Covenator, Covenanter, I'm not sure of the pronunciation of it. Um, This is just, use, I'm just using this tank to get to the, uh, down, down the, uh, the medium line to the co com uh, the comet, the centurion, the Cromwell. Just want to get to that. And this one, for all, you're pretty much the feed, uh, the prey for the derps at tier fives and uh, the other derps because this pretty easily one shot by derps pretty regularly. I mean, only 340 hit points. You'll get lucky every once in a while. It won't do full damage, but for the most part, you're gonna be. If you show your side or your rear, obviously you're not doing it on purpose, but for whatever reason. Pairs of 4 with a derp, KB1 with a derp, M4 Sherman with a derp. It's gonna eat you alive every time. But that's just, it's quick, speedy. Gun isn't the greatest. I prefer the um, the first gun you get over the uh, little speedy, quick firing guns. This one does um, 78 pound with 50 damage. This isn't enough, a lot, but um, 
pretty, uh, obviously 28 rounds a minute is a really good fire rate. You can just keep popping shots off. Next up, Churchill. Very uh, slow tank, but really good armor. Um, I don't know if it's a glitch, where it says 177 or not, but um, I believe it's only I believe it's only 77, but for some reason it's 177. This gun, or this tank was a pain in the butt with the guns. Um, once you got to the six pounder, I just used that all the way through because these other ones weren't the greatest, especially this one I didn't even bother buying. Obviously, the last one is the better choice. 145 pen, 135 damage, 0.36 accuracy, 12 rounds a minute. It's um, pretty, I mean, it's basically like a KV-1. It's just pop, pop, pop rounds. You know, it can be, an, you need to, it's a threat, you need to take care of it. And obviously, the way to deal with this, track it, shoot it in the back, shoot it in the side, the front. You know, aim for up here, viewport, machine gun report because it looks like a little plate on it, but pretty much what I get uh, in this uh, spot. Next up, the Excelsior, which was my first um, gold tank. A lot of people don't like this tank. Um, for when it's high tier, it does well. I mean, it's basically a Churchill, but it moves quicker. The armor might not say the same thing. Obviously, the side armor, eating a library time, 31 millimeters of penetration on the side. Do not show your side. Don't side scrape like other tanks where they pop out. No. Show your front or your rear when you're using this tank. Never expose that side because they're going to track you. And then they're just going to take advantage of that weak armor on the side every time. Keep the turret facing them. Keep the front or the rear facing them. I see so many times people cool, 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 cool behind it think it's got crap armor in the back. Even though they pass by the side to get to the rear. Take advantage of that side if you see this tank. Pairs are four. Uh, was my first tier 5. Definitely like using this uh, tank. This, uh, a lot of people use this uh, L48 gun. Terrible. I mean, it's reliable in the sense that the same M4 Sherman's uh, 75 or 76. Um, I don't like this gun at all. <laughs> 110, 110, no. I just prefer the derp. You might not, you're always going to get some roll if you, pe you know, even if you don't penetrate all the way through. You're not going to get the full 350, but you're going to get some damage roll. It doesn't have that long reload. It says 7.5 compared to the uh, the 15 of this, so it's half, essentially half the reload. But it, I don't mind using that dirt. It's a lot of fun. It's also full city when using this one. Jagdpanzer uh, 4, I just got. This grind, as with any Germans, is a pain in the butt. You always got to get the tracks first, even though you might already have three fourths of the of the tank already researched or all the uh, modules research, you always gotta get this daggone track and it's terrible in the stock room because you have to use that stupid L48 that I just mentioned on the Panzer IV which it does penetrate but it moves so slow and just it's, it's just garbage stock as most people say about any tank it's terrible, notoriously terrible stock but now that I've used the uh, DL70 that the Stug 3 has um, I don't mind using it, obviously, because I love using the Stug. BDRG1B, good tank, crap armor all over. Doesn't move very quick either. The gun for the tier, tier 5, pretty good gun considering the penetration since most others require along those lines of uh, damage by using a derp and having no penetration. So it's got 135, which isn't the best, but it's better than nothing. And it's a uh, 240 damage roll. Accuracy is on the best, and the reload is kind of a pain in the butt without a, uh, a gun rammer. And this, I will mention, this tank grind is by far one of the worst I've had to do, uh, endure. D2, crap. Gun just doesn't penetrate anything. You get lucky to get to the B1, which, if you think about it, is not luck at all, because it's pretty much the same guns. <coughs> 66 pen, 55 damage. That 66 pen, unless you're top tier, you're not penetrating anything like game, and even being top tier, as you can see, it's still only tier 3, <coughs> excuse me, tier 3 gun, doesn't penetrate anything, it's terrible, horrible grind to the B BDR, and even when you get the BDR, at least you get a decent gun, but that grind isn't the, rest, isn't the greatest either to get to the 90mm. Looking forward to the ARL 44, even though I'm not looking forward to the, the mailbox turret. T127, which is a small, uh, uh, light, uh, tier 3, uh, premium tank. A lot of fun. A lot of people have the LTP, I sold mine. Um, people are like, why would you sell that? It's a free tank, uh, you know, limited edition, whatever. 
That tank is terrible. It's basically the same thing as this tank with less armor, and um, I just prefer this tank. It's quick, nimble, you know, pretty pops the rounds out pretty quickly. Um, uh, 51 pounds, there's no damage, so it just pops the, ra you know, the rounds out. It can eat away at most tanks. Obviously, T18, get it from the side or the rear. Not many people use this uh, tank, the KV-13. I, um, I'm not sure what my frame rate's crapping out there. Uh, anyway, KV-13, a lot of fun. This tank, uh, you should have the engine research already coming from the, I took it from the KV-1S because I wanted to get to the medium line. Because if, if you see, why on earth would you get this? It doesn't lead, it doesn't lead anywhere. But some people don't understand. Maybe you came down the heavy line. And you would just want to get to the the medium line without having to go through some of these tanks here. I wasn't looking, I had no interest in the T34 or the T3485 because I haven't heard anything necessarily good about either of those. Um, T43, a lot of people don't like. I had I had fun using mine. Like I said, KB13. Kind of, I mean, maybe you came down the medium line and you wanted to get to an IS IS3. There you go, bypass the research to get to the next line. Isn't that bad? So as you can see, once you get it, it only costs twenty two thousand. Experience to get to the IS, as opposed to the KV-1S, it'll, it'll take you uh, 49,000 uh, experience to get to it. So that's kind of a neat little uh, thing about it. But this, the KV-13 isn't a bad tank, it's a flanker, it's a medium tank. It's got really good armor at the front. Let's see if it pops up here. Uh, 120 millimeters at the front, that's decent, really good, really good for a uh, tier 7 medium. Good thing, IS shots occasionally long. Um, don't count on it, don't just sit there in front of one. I think you're just going to troll their, uh, their shots. But, um, decent armor, flank, pretty good speed. I think I believe I have the removed speed governor on mine, so I get that extra boost from the engines. Flanker, the gun grind can be a pain, a little bit of a uh, pain in the butt. 85mm is decent once you get that, but this one, same one, the T43 gets, and uh, you'll use on the T44 for a while, is a decent gun. Flank, get behind them, pop the rounds. A lot of people use the derp. Still, no reason why you're in a tier seven game. It's a tier five gun, hardly any penetration. Although it is a damage roll, it's. I mean, whereas this one sometimes will take off and you'll get no damage, it still fires pretty consistently at a quick rate, so that you can make up for not getting a da uh, damage roll uh, at that one time. And finally, it's T150, which I've just recently unlocked. I haven't researched the. Uh, best gun for it, but I do have the 85S31. Damage rolls are decent, the penetration could be better. Tier 6 gun, tier 6 tank, it'll do fine for what I have it. Looking forward to the 107 to 6. Um, notoriously slow in the stock, as most tanks are terrible. The 7666 isn't the best gun, nor is the derp, nor is the 57mm. I use the derp just for, you know, the lulls. It was fun while I had it. You know, there, but now that I've got a more consistent gun, I'll, I prefer to use that one over the, uh, the dirt. It's really slow, and for some reason, you know, the armor says 90, 90, 75 for the uh, front sides and rear, respectively. And the turret's 100, 175 once the, the upgraded turret. The stock one's terrible. Um, it's still, uh, doesn't seem to be as reliable to bouncing shots off as I would have thought, especially when I'm on the I'm shooting at at one. It doesn't seem it seems to always bounce shot my shots, but um, before right there, machine gunner support, aim for him. base of the turret there, aim for him. lower plate. Not always you're gonna get lucky with that. Sides obviously easy to do right there, pretty easy target. It's not really angled the best to deflect the shots. Obviously, if it's you got an angle like this, yeah, it's gonna take off. Why would you waste your time? Here, it's pretty much always going to go in. So here to here, it's going to go in. It's a fun tank, though. And uh, those are just some of my tanks. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope it was informative and or funny in some respect. And uh, thank you. See you all later.